Right, so we're down in Lenovo's Morrisville headquarters and taking a look at the latest uh, GPU servers. These support AMD, NVIDIA, and soon Intel GPUs in the same chassis. What are we like, taking a look at here? What's this system and what are you guys so excited about? So this is the 6R, uh, 6, SR680 and 685. Okay. Um, and the 680 so, and 685 are the Intel and AMD uh, CPU variants, yes, right? So I think ending with 80 is going to be the Intel and 85 is going to be the AMD CPUs. Okay. Um, so, got an 8U shuttle here. Um, can slide it out, and we can look at the interior. Yeah, interviews. yeah. Let's let's do that. You're gonna slide it out, or am I sliding it out? I'll, I can slide it out if you can hold this. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yeah, no, mate, go. All right, this thing's not light, by the way. You've got the heavy part. All right. All right. Yep, that's good, actually. That's fine. All right, so we've got it taken, taken apart. So now what are we looking at here? So this, we can start at the back. This is the, we were just calling it the power complex. So we've got eight power supplies, 2,600 okay. watts each. Okay. Um, coming into a, just a reception board. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name, but takes it down to a distribution board. And we've got all of these cables here. So two GPU cables. We got some fan cables, cables for the front card which has a switch that goes to the compute shuttle right and then we've got a couple of cables here for the back plane power so um, that so let's what are we looking at here these connectors are what goes to the back side of the compute yes. board right so kind of calling this the blind mate um, it connects to the compute shuttle so interchangeable that, between the well, AMD and CPU right AMD so that lets shuttle. you use this chassis with any of the compute boards that you have in here whether it's you know, whatever it is today, but yep. tomorrow as well yes. with that same connector. Yes. Okay. And then tucked down in the in the very bottom down there, what are we looking at? That's the switching complex? Yeah, so we've got four Broadcom PCIe switches down there. Um, they're, you know, taking from directly from the GPUs as well as eight PCIe slots. Right. And you've got the 16 NVMe uh, drives. Okay. So we can actually pull that out and they can... Oh, yeah, sure let's keep going. Let's keep taking that, it apart. So right here, we've got kind of a lock. Right. And this lock indicates, you know, it's still cabled. You can add in your PCIe adapters and then push it back in. You're good to go. Um, and it's also good just to you can see all the switches. Right. And the slots. Um, okay. The front, and you've yeah. got your modular fans in the yes, front so here. These, these are all hot swappable. They come out. And is it just uh, what is that? Five fans for the whole. So you've got five system? fans. So we've actually got 15 fans. Okay. So five here that are only for. Just, just for the compute just complex. For the compute okay. We've got ten fans that are over oh, here. Oh, yeah, obviously around the, the back here that I didn't even see. The connectors for the fans are down here, but right. they stay in this overall shuttle when you take it apart. Right. So you've got ten fans for switch card adapters and then your GPU complex. Right, and then you've got the modular SSD bays in front. Sixteen NVMe drives is quite a bit for uh, a GPU server. Normally they're a little more. Uh, Fewer bays, fewer lanes to be able to go there. So you guys have been able to figure that out too. This one here we're looking at is the AMD yes, MI300, so right? AMD MI300 GPU complex. So two rows of four, um, fairly big. And, but, yeah. and these are obviously air cooled today. Yes. So that's, you're still getting your know, standard air cooling. And these boards for the GPUs are also, at least uh, my understanding is the uh, AMD and NVIDIA boards are interchangeable with a, a same, uh, mating mechanism yes mating to the the pcie uh switchboard yes. okay and so when you go to the intel gaudi 3 that'll have a different uh different mating connection yes. so different mating connection which will mean we'll we have a different card for the okay. switches yes okay and this is uh something you guys were showing off at gtc a couple weeks back a lot of excitement there i assume yeah. and uh this is available to customers this month um, I think it's May 17th. Okay. That's what we've been told for specifically the uh, AMD Compute Shuttle. That's what we're launching as well as yeah. AMD GPUs. And I think shortly after is NVIDIA GPUs. And then um, in June, it'll be the Intel Compute Shuttle. Okay, so while we've got these pieces pulled out, we've also got- This one with the smaller heat sinks is gonna be Intel and this one's AMD. 
Okay, um, you guys went all out with the uh, memory population on these. Yes, yeah, so the AMD <laughs> one's got 24 slots. No, I'm just picking on you because there's only two TIMs oh, in each oh, system. Oh, yes, I thought you meant the slots, yes. <laughs> no, this, this is, is just is, for us to test. I know, we're in I the think, engineering lab, so I'll, <laughs> we'll be kind. Okay. I think the AMD one, you can get 2496 gigabyte DDR5. I think that's what's supported. Right. On this one, we've got actually 32 slots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going 64 gigabytes on 32 slots. Okay. Also DDR5. Okay. So, give or take around two terabytes of RAM. The uh, the power coupling coming in the back here is interesting. It's a little bit different on the two boards. I mean, same same mechanism, just uh, the the routing. The route, yeah, the routing is a so little bit this, different. This motherboard, uh, like we said, is the same as the SR six seventy five D three. So that was designed before this. So this is kind of just to fit into that design. Okay. Usually in the 675 you've got just power supplies coming straight in here but obviously we've got the power supplies in the back and we need more because the 675 is four we've got eight right so this small little card here is taking from these power cables and the power cable design is actually based off the intel motherboard because their power input is baked in to the motherboard itself. Right. so to allow more modularity we needed to copy this cable design here but okay. obviously they're going to be routed differently sure the different motherboard designs and you still have um, pcie risers in both of these systems you allow expansion cards in in yes. these so as well in the intel one we've just the op there's not really much interchangeability you just got the two risers right one by 16 pcie slot each okay um but on the amd side you can choose either between again two risers same by 16 pcie slot or you can have one riser and one OCP card. Okay, and obviously the OCP card or any of the NICs will get you local internet access yes. or, or network yes. access. Um, how do these systems access the drives then on the front? Where, sure. How does that connectivity so, work? All of the signals coming out of the CPU to the rest of the system is gonna come through these silver uh, PCIe cables here. I guess you call them MCIO cables. Um, and this bracket here, we're calling part of the blind mate connection, which allows us to change between the computer controls without changing the bottom. Right. So we've got a blind connection here on the other side. Right. And basically the CPUs are only connected up to these switches. And the switches are taking, you know, from the GPUs, these blue are going to the NVMe backplanes. So right. GPUs, backplanes, and if you added PCIe adapters, you would take all of that through the switch back to the CPU. And you've got the switching board yanked out over here too. These uh, eight block connectors here are what are going directly into the GPUs. And we've got four Broadcom switches on the board. And so, then the PCIe slots yeah, so as well, right? These are the PCIe slots here. Um, these eight MCIO cable connectors are what are going to the motherboard and the smaller PCIe connectors up here are for the backplanes to get to the drives. Okay, and we've also yanked out, uh, you've got some boards here. I'm sure uh, my friend Jordan back at the lab will be salivating when he sees this. We've got obviously the NVIDIA H100 board and the MI300 board. Yes, you can also spin them around if you want to see both sides. Yeah, let's go, yeah. Why, why not, move them around. Look at that, the handles, retractable handles yes. built in on the uh, NVIDIA it, one. So it's you actually, the, yeah, the, the, I'm going to get hung up on this for yeah. a minute. I haven't noticed that before, and I, I guess I should have, but that's an elegant little uh, yeah. feature that, uh, that the NVIDIA, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that handle, <laughs> yes. but it's not, it, come on. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, when you spend a quarter million dollars on one of these boards, yeah. you might as well get uh, fancy handles, but uh, okay. So now we can see the connector here. Yes. And the connectors here between... NVIDIA and AMD are going to be the same, especially, well, we, we aren't using these. These are alternate power connectors, but these are the same positioning that allows for the interchangeability of the GPUs. Right. Um, as well as the, you see here, the power. This is all, what we're using for power. So you've got two on each, one on each side, two right. total. Um, and it's the same cable and connection between NVIDIA and AMD. Right. And that just, the whole system is uh, extremely modular. Yes. Uh, all the way through, right? Yeah, so it is very much a modular design. 
So you're, you're talking about the cooling a little bit with these air cooled on, on this system. Now we talk about 15 fans all over the, uh, the chassis, but you guys not in this lab. I think it's over in building eight. I've been to before the Neptune guys are there playing with all sorts of liquid cooling. And when we looked at the 670 V2, that had a, uh, a hybrid system with a radiator and, and closed liquid loop within the system. So this could see something like that in the future. Yeah, so with the, the Intel GPUs coming in, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a different server number, but right. still based on the same design. Right. Fundamentally, it'll have multiple liquid to air cool modules and radiators within the system because um, got more extreme cooling needs with the different GPUs and CPUs coming sure. up. Sure, right, so. sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. You guys get to play with this stuff all the time. Yes. It must be fun to, to, fun, do, yes. to do this in the lab because everyone, I mean, you see these things sitting around, you guys might uh, just be used to seeing yeah. it and playing with it all the time. But uh, as we all know, these are hard to get. And uh, this was a hot topic at uh, your conference uh, last year down in, in uh, Austin. Uh, everybody's uh, so excited about the potential for AI and what these systems can deliver. You guys are worried about the hardware execution and uh, I know I've talked about it again, or a couple times now, but the modularity and the ability to switch between uh, Intel and, and AMD on the compute nodes or all three of the major vendors on the, uh, on the accelerator nodes is, is really impressive. And even the storage, you get 16 drives in that system is, is, uh, is quite a feat. Uh, so the, the engineering on these things is, is pretty remarkable. We'll link to the product page in the description. You can learn more about what Lenovo is doing with these AI systems and check out the modularity. These things are really sweet and uh, I'm sure many of you will be wanting to get your hands on these toys. Call your sales guy.